Now we've got, also in the Middle East, the rise of ISIS. Um, a Western reporter, an, an aged German reporter, uh, was allowed to spend two weeks in ISIS territory. And that's part of his report. Much stronger and much more dangerous than anyone in the West realises. ISIS is supported by an almost ecstatic enthusiasm, he said, that I've never encountered in any other war zone. And this, this guy's 74 and he's been a war correspondent for most of his life. Each day, he said, hundreds of willing fighters arrive from all over the world. For me, it is incomprehensible. But that's what's happening. ISIS really got underway in 2006. It came into prominence in 2014, last year, with big gains in Syria and Iraq. And the US killed most of its leadership with their bombing. A new man has now arisen to head up ISIS. He's called Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, which is a very significant name because Abu Bakr was the first caliph of Islam after the death of Muhammad. And Baghdad was the centre of the Islamic caliphate. And what that man is saying is, I am going to rule over all Muslims and I'm going to do it from Baghdad. Now, the older ones among you will remember the first speech that Winston Churchill gave in Parliament when he became Prime Minister in 1940. He said, I promise you nothing but blood, sweat, toil and tears. Because he was absolutely determined to defeat the Axis powers and win the war against Hitler. This man's not much different. That's what he's saying to his followers. If you want an honourable life, fight jihad. It's all about fighting. It's all about defeating their enemies. It's all about bringing all of the Muslim world into submission under his rulership. Because that's what Islam means. Islam means submission. They don't want freedom. They want everybody to submit to the Quran. But that's not the only thing that he's saying. Just look at this quotation. <coughs> Follow me, he says, and we'll defeat Rome. He's still fighting the ancient battle that the Turks were fighting in 1453 when they took Constantinople. They tried to go further. They tried to take over Europe. They were stopped by Charles Martel in 732. And they stopped again by Jan Sobelski, the king of Poland, in 16. 83 when they tried to take Vienna. They want Europe and this man saying follow me and we'll get it. Let's turn back now to the prophecy of Isaiah and chapter 11. And look at something that hasn't happened yet but now with the rise of ISIS has the potential to happen. Isaiah 11 talks about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ to reign over the earth. It talks about the regathering of the Jews out of all the nations in two stages, Judah and Israel. So Isaiah 11 and verse 12. And he, that's the Lord Jesus Christ, shall set up an ensign for the nations and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah. That's those we've just been reading about in Joel chapter 3. When their Arab enemies seek to drive them out of the land. And many of them flee. They're going to be gathered back from the four corners of the earth. The envy also of Ephraim shall depart and the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. Ephraim shall not envy Judah and Judah shall not vex Ephraim. But they shall fly upon the shoulders of the Philistines toward the west. That's the Gaza Strip, the territory of Hamas. They shall spoil them of the east together. They shall lay their hand upon Edom and Moab, and the children of Ammon shall obey them. Who today is in the territory of the ancient nations of Edom, Moab and Ammon? Well, it's the Jordanians. It's the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan, set up by the British in 1922 under Abdullah, and his grandson is still ruling from Amman. 
And they're in the territory of Edom, Moab and Ammon. And they're reasonably disposed toward Israel. They're not fanatical enemies like the Hezbollah and Hamas groups are. But, but we've all seen what happened in the last month when ISIS captured a Jordanian pilot and burned him to death. And the Jordanian response has been more air raids over ISIS territory, more bombing of ISIS trying to eliminate this group. We're now in a situation where ISIS is on the Jordan border. That sort of brownish coloured area on the map is the territory that ISIS control. And they're right down to the Jordanian border and they're right down to the Saudi Arabian border. And they did a raid over the border into Saudi Arabia a few weeks ago. They only killed three people. One of them was the general who was responsible for the defence of all of that border. They knew whether, who they were going for. So ISIS is now right on the Jordan border and the Jordanians are bombing them. Watch this space. Because if ISIS goes into Jordan and takes over Jordan, and Jordan is an unstable country today with many ISIS supporters within its borders, we could find the very exact situation that's prophesied in Isaiah 14, 11 verse 14 where we've got a hostile power on the east of Israel as well as on the west.